Okay, so I'm gonna answer some qu <laughs> Try this again. So I'm gonna answer some questions about pre-emergent. People keep asking, they're concerned that their pre-emergent pre-emergent isn't either working or they made a mistake or something going wrong. So I'll cover that. But the first thing I want to do is I'm gonna fly you around the property real quick. Uh, just take a fun little tour, and everything is just so darn green right now. We have had rain, rain, rain nonstop. Uh, three or four times a week. We're getting anywhere from one to four inches of rain a week. Temperatures are in the 60s, if not 70s. I'm actually taking the sweatshirt off in a minute because it's about 73 degrees out today. So it's starting to fire up. It's actually really cool. Here we go. Built in the late uh, 1980s. So we're not talking about a historical house. We're not talking about really good construction. So I would say there's a 95% chance we're gonna tear that down and we found a house plan that we like. But here's the money shot right here. <laughs> this is it. Now this is a huge 3.2 acre lake. You can see the dock down there, matter of fact. So it seems like I'm getting a lot of questions about pre-emergence and this first round of fertilizer. So let me just touch on that real quick. First of all, we cover, I say this at the beginning of every video, sorry. We cover a lot of this in the lawn guides, get the lawn guides, over 2 million people have used them because they're free and we don't want your information. There's no app, there's no emails, anything. So you go to freelawncareguide.com and at the top there's a link to the Bermuda website and the Zoysia website, but that website is for cool season. There's calendars, there's questions and answers, there's product links. If you want to know about pre-emergent, seeding, grubs, funguses, whatever you want to know about, it's all covered there, so get them and use them. Next, let me just touch on pre-emergence real quick. I had someone uh, send me a message or leave a comment and they said, hey doc, I put out pre-emergent last week and this week I'm seeing a whole bunch of weeds. And uh, the picture, I actually got a picture of it and it was Poana. So the poanna that he is seeing is actually much longer, much older than a week old. Remember, poanna takes a long time to grow. So the poanna came out and germinated prior to him putting it down, and it's going to grow. Understand what pre-emergence do. They stop, they stop roots from growing, basically. They stop cell replication. The majority of them, that's what they do. So you want your seed to germinate. And then that pre-emergent stops the root growth and that plant basically dies. Matter of fact, you can tell if it's working, if you can go over. Normally, Poana has these really bushy, kind of hard to pull out roots. Well, once you get your pre-emergent down after a couple weeks, you'll notice something. You can go over to your Poana and just pull it out. I've noticed that before. If you have a lot of Poana going on, you can go... I, just get a bottle, go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get a bottle of the regular Image, Image Nuts Edge Killer, spray the lawn. Now here's the problem with Image, is it takes a long time to work. It may take 10 to 14 days easily before you start to see that Poana yellow up because it most of it is root-based action. Got it? So if you have a bunch of Poana, now Poana will die out, it's just ugly. It just, you're fighting it and you're like, man, don't worry about it. Okay. So this is why in the lawn guides, we cover the split treatment. Your initial pre-emergent treatment, I would say is anywhere from 60 to 90% effective, somewhere in there. It's not 100%. That's why we do the split treatment. 
after about four weeks, you put down your first one. After about four weeks, we come out with the liquid, which is in that, which is in the description. There's a page down there, and all these are on there. And we spray the liquid on there. Now, the liquid has pre and post killing, especially for crabgrass. So if you have crabgrass that broke through your pre-emergent treatment, that's a good time to do it. Now, someone had a question. They said, hey, doc, should I wait for my second? Should I wait for the spray treatment till after I scalp? That might be a good idea. So you put down your granular, and then you usually what I tell you to do is put down a coat of PGF balance, which is just a light 10, 10, 10. Let your lawn wake up slowly. Once you start to see a nice green haze all over the lawn, that's about the time that you're going to go ahead and you're going to scalp it. You can spray down your second coat of pre-emergent, the, the second round, and then put out PGF complete. Got it? So that's sort of the scenario. So coming off winter, we're going to put down the granular pre-emergent, and we're going to put down a 10-10-10. Just put a little bit of nutrients. It's very mild. A little bit of nutrients, the grass starts to wake up. Once you start to see green all over your lawn, that's when you're going to start your scalping. When you start your scalping, after you get your scalp done, that's when you can go ahead and put down your PGF complete and, and do your spray, uh, spray pre-emergent. That's really the steps that you're going to follow. About a week or two after that, if you still have warm weather and that grass is starting to come up, you might even hit it with some DGL, the new DGL, dark green lawn. Hopefully it'll be ready by then. It still hasn't even hit the market yet. Why do I do that? Because that's when we're going to hit that push zone. And we hit that push zone and we want our lawns to really thicken up and that'll choke out all the weeds. And the DGL is basically all fast release nitrogen. So you put a little bit of extra nitrogen on there and that's what the plants want. It does have some iron in there, but it's mainly nitrogen. So we come out here and we pop it with a little bit of extra nitrogen. So you got that schedule? That's kind of what we're doing. That's kind of what we do every year. And because we do that split for your pre-emergent treatment, uh, I'm telling you, I have almost no weeds all year long when I do that on Bermuda and on Zoysia. You don't have to come out here with weed sprays all the time. We have put down, I have put down PGF Complete here because I've, I've got an actively growing lawn. Um, I've put down some nitrogen, straight nitrogen on the fields and on the natural area. And let me tell you what, I'm going to walk you around here real quick. I'm going to show you some of these green spaces. It's utterly amazing. John was here today cutting. Um, and then I'll just throw around some, I'll just put up some other stuff, random videos too. So here we go. So here's the backyard. Now this is perennial rye. And... I uh, this is now on PGF complete. It's just doing fabulous. Someone said, "Doc, will this stuff last through the Georgia summer?" We'll see. The one the one benefit I have is that I have free water. It runs off my shallow well, so I can water every day during a drought if I want to. Now, let me give you one little update. See this area over by the shed? It's kind of nasty looking, looking. It's all weeds. I have a stump grinder coming and he's going to take out all these little stumps and then I'm when I get my skid steer in a couple weeks I'm going to come in here and I'm going to scrape this and scrape this and scrape this we're going to plant this I was telling John here goes another lawn so we're going to install another lawn in this area over here I'm going to keep a little gravel parking pad over here but other than that this will be able to be cut it'll be another lawn just what I need right I do want to show you this. The pond front really looks amazing. We came out here and we mulched this down. This is a little flower garden we're putting in. I may come out here and get some stones and copy that over. But what you have to see is you have to see this. This is really cool. Look at that. Dude, what a lawn. And it goes all the way back over here. And it comes all the way through and it goes all the way down around that cabin good lord look at that that's probably that's probably the thumbnail right there <laughs> you always got to have a good thumbnail on your video so i told john what we're doing here is we're now cutting this with a zero turn this is annual rye with bermuda underneath and i told him every week we're going to start cutting it a half inch lower so he was at three and a half today. He took it down to three. Then we'll go down to two and a half. Then we'll go down to two. And we'll start cutting this lower and lower. Over here, this is clover, rye, weeds, and even turnips over in here. And what I'm going to do over in here is I'm going to seed in Bermuda because I don't have irrigation over here. And come summertime, everything will die off if I don't have Bermuda in there. So this whole area, 
I mean, it's huge. This is a massive area. Let me show you the natural area. Oh, and someone asked about this area. We're gonna keep mulching this and I'm gonna get some like little, uh, I'm gonna get some little cypresses, like Leland cypresses or something. We're gonna pop a few in here, some kind of evergreen, and then we're gonna mulch this real heavy. Someone asked why I left that. I left these two stumps, and that's because there's a water line that runs right next to it, and if I pull those stumps up or grind them, it's too dangerous. But, okay, so there's the house. And this is the natural area. I really wish I might be able to find a picture of the before and after of some of these. But look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? This is just now this is ryegrass, fescue, clover, weeds. This is just a combination, a mix of everything. It's just crazy. And now I want to show you, if you follow my channel at all. I want to show you the uh, septic drain field. We brought in dirt, I stole dirt, and we had to mound up a bunch of dirt over here to get that septic drain field higher. And then I planted annual rye. And you can see it now, look at it. And I did put some nitrogen down on it. So all this now is what I seeded. I'm gonna have to put some kind of, I'm gonna have to put some kind of, um, long-term grass seed in here maybe it's going to be bermuda i don't know but then i'd still need to come in here and level some of this off so we can have this so we can cut it i have got the pro 44t hooked up to <laughs> to my uh axis and if someone was asking, I covered this in the last video, but there's two modifications I did to this. I took off those really long bars that let you offset. I don't need them here. And it's a pain when you do your turns. So I tie right in directly to that short bar. And the other thing is I got rid of these pneumatic air tires. One of them went flat. Um, and I just replaced it with the same tires that are back here, which are those hard plastic ones. There we go. That field is cut. I gotta, I gotta keep moving through here pretty quickly because I've got these ruts and there's a lot of water in here. But my goal up here, this is of course all for the deer up here. It's just to get that new young growth and get a lot of clover in there. Why do I keep belching so much? I don't think I'm gonna cut these other fields. I'm gonna go check on John. And then I've learned, <clears throat> I'm trying to get John in the habit of it too, of anytime we run muck and wet, we're rinsing off all of our equipment. Man, that thing's so bumpy. Bumpy right there. What are you cutting on? Three? Three. All right, let's see what it does. I'm a big believer in washing your equipment. 
We're getting, it, getting to the point that every time we use our equipment, especially in the spring, we're washing it off. Cut in the orchard. Man, it smells like onions. That's a big yard, isn't it? The yard have got big. <laughs> That's the biggest yard he's cutting. I wonder how many acres that is. That's got to be what three or four acres of cutting. It's got to be three or four acres of just cutting those, all those what we now call grass. And it's like I keep every time I turn around, I'm adding more grass. Yeah. You notice that? Yeah. So that area next to the shed down there. I got a stump grinder coming, I think this week. He's gonna grind those stumps. And then over the next two or three weeks, I'm gonna have a skid steer and I'll rake that. I'll rake that area and then we'll seed it and that'll be another area that we'll be cutting. Cause right now it's just all weeds. The grass look good though. It looks amazing. It's crazy, man. When you start to get, when you start to get three days a week of rain, basically is what we've been getting. And temperatures are in that the highs are in that 60 to 75 and it doesn't get like 10 degrees it stays maybe 29 to 32 somewhere in there man that's just perfect let's just hope we don't get any hard freezes uh tomorrow morning we'll come out here we'll move those air conditioners we'll um We'll, uh, we'll actually start to do the, the bonfire thing. We'll collect up all that wood. Okay. And then after we get that done, we can probably do some weed eating and uh, clean up. All right, yeah. Start the clean up. Oh, I forgot you didn't get the fish food, did you? I forgot. I'll have to pick it up. I'll go over there. I'll go over there. Maybe I'll go tomorrow morning. No, because you're going to be here. I can get in the morning. All right. I'll text you and remind you tonight. Yeah, hey Siri, remind me to text John tonight at 6 p.m. <laughs> I got both my weed so I mean Jeff will do a lot of weed anymore too. Okay. The the fish food I get, I have to order a tractor supply and have it shipped there. Otherwise it costs me eighty dollars in shipping. So I have it shipped to the store and it's free. But I buy that Purina, which is the real small pellets. The bigger, the bigger catfish food blocks up my feeders. <laughs> so tomorrow, we're gonna come out here. We're gonna go up to the garden over here, and we're gonna build a bonfire. We're gonna burn a lot of these sticks and branches that are around. And what we're gonna do is, once that gets real hot and I have a high bed of coals, we're actually gonna build our compost pile on top of that. And I'll explain that tomorrow you really want you really have to add some additional heat when you get these cool temperatures to get those compost piles going but we're almost ready to start that garden working the soil at least so make sure you're subscribed hit subscribe hit that like button i don't ask that often but smash that like button and make sure you're subscribed and turn your notifications on because you may not get see that video up in your feed and it's really important to make sure your notifications are turned on for the channel that's about it, man. I'm tired. It's uh, it's five o'clock. <laughs> Can you tell it's daylight savings time? Feels like it's feels like it's four, which it is. Anyways, talk to you later, Doc. Mm -hmm.